All right, good morning, Coach Lepp. Um, good we'll get morning. Started, get started with questions if you're ready. Um, I guess as ready as I'll be. <laughs> uh, JJ, get us started. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Uh, doing good, brother. Just got off the practice field. Uh, thought we had a pretty good practice, so pretty excited. Thanks for joining us today. What were some of your biggest takeaways from this past week? Uh, that our kids are unbelievable. Um, that's probably the biggest takeaway, that we have a great staff, that Coach Trailer has established a culture here that we all truly believe in. Um, man, our kids play hard. They play physical. And it's a lot of fun to watch. Um, man, it's a lot of fun to watch. That's, that's probably my biggest takeaway. We have great kids, great kids that play hard and, and play physical. What does it say about the about the players to be able to go through, you know, that adversity without having – Coach Nix and you just stepping in, what, what does it say about the group of kids you guys you have? You know, I think, um, number one, like I said earlier, that, you know, we got a lot, we got some great young men. Uh, but I, I do think it all goes back to really the number one thing is Coach Trailer has done an unbelievable job of establishing a culture, you know, not only with our kids, but our staff. And, and we talk about our culture daily. Uh, we have a culture pillar every week that we talk about daily and it's over and over and we've talked about mental toughness I bet for four different weeks over and over every day and so um, to me that's been the biggest thing that our kids believe in us they believe in coach trailer they believe in this culture and because of that because of that belief I think they just kind of you know have the mindset that hey man whatever happens we're just going to roll out there go have some fun hit some people and run hard to the ball okay Greg Coach, what was the period like from finding out Friday night that you'd be calling the game to the start of the game Saturday? What did you guys have to do in that period, or how did that window play out? You know, it wasn't um, that big of a deal. You know, it's kind of that next man up um, mentality. Uh, you know, our staff, I, you know, I got everybody together, and we sat and talked about it. and uh, We said, hey, man, let's just keep things the same. Let's just let's go out there and do what we do and uh, let our kids know we all know the game plan. Um, let's just call the game, have fun, and, and uh, let those guys play free. We don't need to act any nervous or tense or that we're not sure what's going on, man. We're going to be confident because I promise you this, our kids will play confident, and that's what they did. But it was a little bit little bit crazy. But, um, shoot, man, I, you know, the staff, the belief we have in each other and the belief we have in these kids, it makes it a lot easier. What was your previous experience level with play calling? When, how, have you, how much have you done that in your career? Oh, shoot. You know, um, you know, I've coached high school ball for two different years. I was an assistant coach there, uh, but the D.C. where I've worked has, has allowed me to kind of do a little bit. Um, and then in different staffs I've been on uh, in the spring, uh, sometimes in the spring, the D.C. is kind of, hey, Jess, why don't you why don't you call a little bit of it? Just kind of get a feel for it. So I've done a little bit of that, it, you know, nothing crazy, um, nothing like that that I did. Uh, but like I said, it, when you have a staff that we have that all believe in each other and the kids that we have, it it really just, man, just don't mess it up, really. that's <laughs> I went in going, just don't mess it up. Let these old kids play hard. So when you watched it back on film, how did you feel about how you called the game or, or you know, your performance in a general sense? Oh, shoot. You know, um, it, it was okay. You know, there's some, there's some things out there that you would have liked to maybe been a little better on. Um, I was probably pretty conservative uh, at first just because, like I said, I just didn't want to mess anything up, let our kids play. Um, but, you know, it's a learning experience. It was fun. Um, I enjoyed it. And, and shoot, you know, just if, if, if I get another opportunity uh, this week, then I'll be excited and see what happens. Did you try to think about, you know, what would Coach Nick's call here? Or did you sort of want to put your own stamp on it and just call it from your own perspective? No, you know, our staff, our staff, as a defense, we do a great job of game planning together. Um, we have from the start of the season till now. So really it's all of us together kind of um, joining in. And, and it was probably more that we, we had more voices in my ear uh, talking about, hey, you know, if we see this, man, well, let's think about this. So it was, it was really a staff effort. It really was. Um, nobody tried to put any kind of spin on it. And that was my number one thing I, I told the staff when we met. I said, listen, this isn't about any of us. It's about our team. It's about our, our, our staff together. It's about our players. Um, let's not let anybody try to, you know, go after the limelight or make it about them. And, and I think we did a great job of that. 
Did you think the defense overall kind of looked the same as it's looked every other week or were there some differences you noticed because of the change? No, I, I, it looked to me, it looked like we always look, you know, we played a little bit uh, sluggish at times, didn't play well the whole, the whole game. Uh, but for the most part, our kids played hard and were physical. So, um, you know, I, I think it, it, I think it looked pretty much the same. I really do. We've talked a lot about game day, but how about through the week? Like, how is the game planning process now this week different with Coach Nick's not there? Kind of who does more or how does that all shake out? You know, like I said earlier, it, it's there wasn't a lot of difference just because we've all um, been involved in the game planning from the beginning of the year. You know, Coach Wright, he does a great job with the run game. Coach Graham, uh, he does a great job with the passing game. You know, I work on a lot of third down and red zone stuff. Coach um, Brown. Um, you know, who's got moved on, Zach Brown, who uh, unbelievable young coach, uh, smart, sharp, does a great job. We're excited that he was able to, you know, move up this week. You know, he does a great job with, you know, formation sh- stuff. And then we have all the other coaches, you know, both Coach Williams, Sarge. Um, he does a good job with uh, the running backs, scouting the running backs. Coach Williams, Jarvion Williams, you know, who played here, probably should have him look at running backs too, maybe. Uh, but, you know, he does a good job of looking at the receivers, then you got Coach Rhodes, who does a good job uh, of looking. Uh, well, Coach Rhodes and Coach Drago really we do a good, great job of scouting the offensive line and the tight end. So it's just kind of all of us working together and putting our thoughts on the board and uh, coming up with a plan that we believe uh, will give our kids the best chance to be successful. You mentioned a lot of input and a lot of communication. Is there anything you guys want to change about, like, the workflow or how that communication works compared to last week, or are you really happy with, the, with everything? Uh, we're, we're, I think we're pretty happy with everything, and we've been happy all year, and we're just doing the best we can to maintain um, what we've been doing. You know, I think we've played good defense. I, I still believe, I think our staff still believes uh, that our best defense is still ahead of us. Um, we still believe we haven't quite played our best game. Um, and so we keep striving for that. And I think the, the more consistency we can have uh, with our group and with each other, uh, the better we continue to be. Obviously, the circumstances aren't ideal, but what does it mean for you and your career to have an opportunity to call the plays? Has this been kind of a special week or two for you? You know, I, I'd be lying if I told you no. Um, but really, you know, Greg, I'm trying to do the best I can to um, – make it about our staff and our team because that's what it truly is. And it, there's been some people who have called me and said stuff. And I've been like, you know, it, I didn't do anything different, but I was the final voice. That's really it. Uh, we have so many guys, like I said, I mentioned all those coaches that, that, that are able to provide unbelievable input um, that, you know, really it's just the, I'm the last voice that they hear. And, and I'm just leaning on them as much as they lean on me. Hey, JJ. Coach, where did you call the game from, the sidelines or the press box? You know, I was in the press box. Uh, that was something we discussed. Uh, I know if I ever have an opportunity, you know, in the future somewhere or, or wherever, uh, being on the field would probably be pretty important to me. But we wanted to do the best we could to keep everything the same. I think it was important for our kids um, to see that. It was important for um, our staff to feel like we're all still doing what we do on game day. Um, so we try to do the best we could to keep it the same, uh, you know, so that's, that's what we're going to continue to do as, as long as we have to do it. What can you tell us about Southern Miss? They, are you guys preparing for two quarterbacks? You know, we kind of are uh, a little bit, um, you know, both quarterbacks are athletic, uh, both quarterbacks throw the ball well. So I don't think there's a lot of difference. I think maybe one is got, feels like he has a little bit more experience, maybe a little bit more understanding of the offense. Um, but they're still both – they both are good athletes. I think the offensive line is big. One of the bigger offensive line, uh, lines we'll see. Um, they're physical, big, and, and they're – we got to do a good job of trying to establish the line of scrimmage to try to make sure that we play on their side of the line of scrimmage and not ours. Uh, receiver-wise, they might be one of the better receiver groups that we've seen. Um, number five, number 17, sorry I don't have the names. I've always been in my career a number guy. Um, but number five and number 17, man, those those guys can play. And then zero as well. They, they've got some good receivers. And then running back wise, um, they've got running backs that run hard. Um, they run hard and they're tough to tackle. And, and they're, I'm telling you, it, it's not – they're Southern Miss. 
and Southern Miss, they've got some talent. And so they, they are, they've got a lot of ability. We got to, we're going to have to play our A game for sure. Okay, Greg, you want to wrap us up? Yeah, so we've seen in the last few weeks the defense has seemingly come on pretty strong in the second half. It, it's become sort of a trend for you guys. What's been the key to that, or how have you guys managed to make that, that leap each halftime? You know, um, if I knew the answer, I would somehow try to use that to play better in the first half. Uh, you know, I, I think our kids, number one, I'd say i got to give a lot of credit for, to Philo, our strength coach, uh, who just had a brand-new little baby a couple of days ago. Um, but he, he has done a great job of getting our kids in shape. So I think our kids, um, I think the longer the game goes, the better they are uh, just because they're in great shape. And I think they just have a lot of confidence in what they do. And, and you know, to be honest with you, like I said, we, we try to hang our hat on being more physical and playing harder. And, and I think if, if you can be more physical and you can play harder, I think other people will wear down. And, and that's kind of where we maybe will continue to thrive and, and, and be great later on because we continue to play hard and play physical. And, and you gotta, we, we've got a lot of kids in a lot of play, uh, areas that also we kind of sub guys in. You know, we've got kids that we, I've got four safeties. I'm talking about them personally. I've got four safeties that all play a lot. And so we try to keep them fresh as well. How do you guys handle like halftime adjustments? What kind of stuff do you give the players or tweak to maybe help them have that better performance coming out of the break? Sure. You know, there's, there's little things. If, if there's something that's given us a problem, we all put our heads together and, um, you know, we'll try to maybe tweak something a little bit. Last week we kind of tweaked a couple little pressures and then um, just challenged our guys that we just got to tackle better. You know, that was the big adjustment. We tweaked a couple pressures and we got to tackle better. And so uh, we just try to do a good job as a staff, and it's, that's how it's been all year. Again, I cannot give enough credit to Coach Wright and Coach Graham, both Coach Williams, Coach Brown, um, you know, Coach Drago and uh, Coach Rhodes for just all coming together and, and doing the best we can to, to make sure we give our kids the best chance uh, possible to be successful, and, and a lot of that's at halftime as well. Got it. Thank you. Thank you guys very much, Greg. Thank you, JJ. Thanks, thanks Coach Lowe. Thanks, Coach.